Russia is making it harder and costlier for foreign companies to leave its market amid rising tensions with the West over its invasion of Ukraine. According to a new rule issued by the Russian finance ministry on Monday, investors from unfriendly countries that have imposed sanctions against Russia must donate at least 10 percent of the sale proceeds of their assets to the state budget. This is in addition to a 50 percent haircut on the value of their assets that was announced last year as part of a package of measures to retaliate against Western sanctions. The new rule applies to companies from the U.S., Canada. Australia, Japan, Norway, and most of the European Union. The move is seen as a way for the Kremlin to discourage foreign investors from exiting Russia and to raise funds for its military and social spending amid a deepening economic crisis. Russia has been facing international isolation and pressure since it annexed Crimea and launched a covert war in eastern Ukraine in 2022. The US and its allies have imposed several rounds of sanctions on Russian officials, businesses, and sectors, such as energy, finance and defense. The sanctions have hurt Russia's economy, which was already struggling with low oil prices, high inflation, and a weak currency. The country's gross domestic product, GDP, contracted by 4.5% in 2022 and is expected to shrink by another 2% in 2023, according to the International Monetary Fund. IMF 4. The Kremlin has responded by adopting a fortress Russia strategy, which aims to reduce its dependence on foreign trade and investment boost its domestic production and innovation, and increase its geopolitical influence in regions such as the Middle East and Africa. However, this strategy has also come at a cost. Russia has lost billions of dollars in foreign direct investment FDI, since the start of the Ukraine crisis. According to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development UNCTAD, FDI inflows to Russia dropped by 96% in 2022, from $29 billion in 2021 to $1.2 2 billion. Many foreign companies have decided to scale back or exit their operations in Russia due to the political risks, regulatory uncertainties, and operational challenges. According to a study by Yale School of Management, more than 1,000 companies announced their intention to leave Russia within two months of the outbreak of the war in February 20,223. However, only 520 companies have managed to complete their exit so far while about 550 are still active in the country. The study found that some of the reasons for the slow exit process include, the difficulty of finding buyers for their assets in a depressed market the complexity of complying with Russian laws and regulations the fear of losing access to a large and potentially lucrative market the hope of a diplomatic resolution of the conflict Some of the companies that have left or are planning to leave Russia include, McDonald's, the fast food giant closed more than 200 outlets in Russia in 2022 due to sanitary inspections and legal disputes with local authorities. It plans to sell its remaining 150 restaurants to a Russian partner by the end of 2023. Coca-Cola, the beverage company sold its bottling operations in Russia to its Turkish partner Anadolu Efes in 2022 for $1.4 billion. It still retains its marketing and distribution rights in the country. ExxonMobil the oil giant announced in 2022 that it was ending its joint ventures with Russian state-owned Rosneft due to U.S. sanctions. It booked a $200 million loss from exiting its projects in Russia. Siemens, the German engineering company said in 2022 that it would stop supplying power equipment to Russian state-owned companies after it discovered that some of its turbines were illegally diverted to Crimea. It also sold its stake in a joint venture with Russian firm Power Machines for an undisclosed amount. The new exit tax is likely to add more hurdles and costs for these and other foreign companies that want to leave Russia. It could also deter potential investors from entering or expanding their presence in the country. Some analysts have questioned the effectiveness and legality of the exit tax. Some have argued that it violates international law and the bilateral investment treaties that Russia has signed with many countries. Others have warned that it could backfire by hurting Russia's reputation and attractiveness as an investment destination. The Russian government, however, has defended the exit tax as a legitimate and necessary measure to protect its national interests and sovereignty. It has also accused some Western companies of trying to evade taxes and exploit loopholes in the Russian legislation. The exit tax is not the only challenge that foreign investors face in Russia. They also have to deal with a complex and often unpredictable regulatory environment, a weak judicial system, a high level of corruption, and a lack of transparency and accountability. Despite these difficulties, some foreign companies have decided to stay or even expand their presence in Russia, citing its strategic importance, its large consumer market, its abundant natural resources, and its potential for growth and innovation. Some of the companies that have remained or increased their investments in Russia include, PepsiCo, the food and beverage giant has invested more than $9 billion in Russia since 1992 and operates 25 plants across the country. It plans to invest another $1 billion over the next three years to support its local production and distribution network. Volkswagen, 
the German carmaker has invested more than 3 billion euros in Russia since 2006 and operates four plants in the country. It plans to invest another 1 euro, 2 billion by 2025 to increase its production capacity and launch new models. Shell the Anglo-Dutch oil giant has invested more than $20 billion in Russia since 1991 and participates in several joint ventures with Russian partners, such as Gazprom Neft, Rosneft, and Novatech. It plans to invest another $10 billion by 2030 to develop new projects in the Arctic and Siberia. These companies have adopted various strategies to cope with the challenges and risks of doing business in Russia, such as diversifying their portfolio in markets localizing their production and supply chain engaging with local stakeholders and communities complying with local laws and regulations seeking political support and protection the exit tax is likely to test the resilience and commitment of these and other foreign investors in Russia it remains to be seen how they will react to this new obstacle and whether they will reconsider their long-term plans in the country